Good morning, it is 6 a.m. here in Seoul in South Korea and today we are doing something pretty interesting. We're heading to the demilitarized zone between the North and South Korean border or better known as the DMZ. So to visit the DMZ you can't go by yourself, you have to do it with an official tour company. So today we are out with VIP travel. My name is Lina, so today I'm gonna call all of you as my angels, Lina's angel. The DMZ is around an hour and a half drive north of Seoul, which was plenty of time for Lena to fill us in on what all we were going to see throughout the tour today, and to give us some background information on the DMZ, so we have a better understanding of what we're going to witness. The bus temperature is reading at 0.6 degrees. When we first got onto the bus, it was reading at like 4.5, so the further north we're going, the colder it's getting. And it's bloody freezing. And this is us inside the bus. <laughs> Before we go any further, we felt like it was important to give you more information on what the DMZ actually is and why it exists today. The Korean War erupted in the early 1950s, a conflict between North and South Korea. Attentions escalated, so did the stakes. The Korean War gripped the world, drawing in global powers and forever altering the course of history. The United Nations, led by the United States, intervened to support South Korea, while China and the Soviet Union backed North Korea. The war raged on for three years with over three million deaths and tens of thousands of casualties. In 1953, an armistice was signed bringing a ceasefire. The agreement established the Demilitarized Zone, or the DMC, along the 38th parallel serving as a buffer between North and South Korea. The war ended in an armistice, not a peace treaty, meaning that technically North and South Korea are still at war today. The Demilitarized Zone is a strip of land about 160 miles long and approximately 2.5 miles wide, separating the two Koreas. Fast forward to today and the DMC stands as a reminder of the conflict's aftermath and has now become a popular tourist destination for people to visit and learn more about the Korean War, to get a glimpse into North Korea and to set foot onto what is undoubtedly the world's most infamous border. So today's tour consists of four different stop-offs and we've just arrived to the first one which is the Peace Park. Our tour guide Lena has been so so good so far, she's given us loads of information and a tour like this can be quite heavy and thankfully she's making it very entertaining and light-hearted but as we've arrived to the park entrance here it's not exactly what we were expecting. There's a burger joint back there, ice cream, coffee and everything like that but I can actually see Lena ahead with her wee flag waving us along so I better keep moving. This park is dedicated to the 10 million South Koreans separated from their families when the peninsula was divided post-war. And every year, many events for unification are held here. You can also see an old steam train that was derailed during the war, war memorials, and learn more about the history of the Korean War. So whenever the war came to a ceasefire, prisoners of war from both the north and south side were given opportunity to make the decision of either returning to their home country to live with their family or to stay in the country that they were in, so either to go north or to go south. There was two bridges built for these prisoners of war to actually make this decision and to cross over into the other land. This is the Freedom Bridge behind me, so this was used for South Korean prisoners of war that were in the north to come back to the south. And then in a different location there's another bridge that they call the bridge Bridge of no return and it was for North Korean people to go back to the north. They were given this opportunity to make the decision and then after they decided the two bridges were actually destroyed so they couldn't be used again. This one behind me is actually like a remake of the original Freedom Bridge which is way over there somewhere but not too far away. The north is literally just over the other side here. It's so closeless at the minute. Walking around here getting told all of the, the history, the information and the stories from our guide is like a full emotional journey to be honest with you. It's very sad to learn about, really interesting for us because it's a topic that we personally don't know that much about but yeah it's a very emotional day. So Lena, our tour guide, was telling us about this souvenir shop that you can see right behind me. It's a little white hut that you wouldn't think anything of, but inside it's the only place where you can get North Korean money. We are not souvenir people at all, but it would be pretty cool to say that I have some North Korean currency. So we're going to go inside and see how much it is. So we didn't pick up any North Korean money. It was a bit out of our budget to be honest with you. They had loads of notes and they were pretty unique and cool to look at. They were all like brand new fresh crisp notes so I'm assuming they're just still printing them. But yeah they were in around like 15 quid sterling and I'm like I don't know. Someday I would like to go visit North Korea myself and I always like collecting money from different countries but I always like having money from countries I have actually been in. So I don't know, just didn't feel right. But we did get a coffee to warm ourselves up. It is absolutely bitter cold today. Like, 
don't know if you can see that, but like your breath's so visible, I am shivering. So this is well needed. We've come into like a wee war memorial site at the moment, different statues, different like signs and plaques and stuff. I don't know what to say, um, it's all in Korean, but yeah, it's a really peaceful place, apart from all the construction happening over in the corner. But yeah. The Peace Park is 7k away from the military demarcation line, so it wasn't until we got back on the bus and headed further into the DMC area that we came across our first military checkpoint. You must bring your password when you're visiting the DMC, as you will need to show it multiple times during your tour. The second stop of the day was the Dora Observatory. Personally for us, this was the part of the tour we were most looking forward to. This is a viewpoint and an observatory where you can actually take a look over and see into North Korea with your own eyes. You can see out over the mountains, over the hills, and you can see into the third largest city in North Korea as well. And it's quite interesting. There's a few funny stories that our guide was telling us there. Like one of them, there is a huge big flagpole that South Korea built. And then North Korea decided they wanted a flagpole too, but they had to build a bigger one at their side of the border. So they built a bigger one. Then South Korea built a bigger one to kind of combat that. And then North Korea came back again and built yet again another bigger flagpole. So they currently have the biggest one out of the two. South Korea decided they weren't putting any more time, money or resources into a fight over who's having the largest flagpole so it's pretty funny and then underneath the North Korean flagpole there's actually like what looks like a wee village a couple of wee buildings and things like that and our guide was actually telling us that they have been able to figure out that it's not even a real village that there's just like hollow kind of buildings that are there that they have painted windows and doors onto the buildings as well uh, that is the fake village even though they have the buildings, there's no window of the building. Way out in the distance on the hills, we haven't been able to see it, but I've heard a few other people saying they have seen it. There's a sign that actually says North Korea is the best country in the world. They've put it up as full propaganda and it is just ridiculous to be honest with you. But the views are actually really, really nice. From up here you can see way out into the north and the south, way over all the mountains. The sun is starting to shine down now, which is beautiful as well. You can actually see some people on the North Korean side as well when you look through all of the binoculars that are up here. You can actually see a North Korean soldier on one of the viewpoints in the far distance. There are two propaganda buildings respectively. Our next stop is going to be the third tunnel, which was a tunnel that the North Korean soldiers actually dug whenever they were trying to do like a surprise attack on South Korea. We're on a bit of a time scale. You only get 45 minutes when you come to this part. You have to be in and out of the DMC in a certain amount of time. And you can hear our tour group being call called. So yeah, we're in a bit of a rush. So there's also a coffee stop here at the door observation deck and at the first stop as well, which was the Peace Park. So if you do want to get a few snacks or a warm drink, you have the option. I don't know if we'll have that once we leave here though. So first of all, if you do not want to go inside the tunnel, first of all, follow me and we will watch a short film about the DMC area. And so we have just got off the bus here at the third tunnel and we're going to make our way inside where we're going to watch a short film about the tunnels and the history of the war here. And then we're going to make our way inside the tunnel where we know we can't bring you. So we will see you after. Oh, so we have just made our way back up from the tunnels and that was a steep walk. The tunnel itself that the North Koreans built is 358 meters down. So to get to it, we had to go on another like ramp tunnel that the South Koreans built and it takes you right down into the tunnel. It's very steep, but once you get down to the very bottom, the tunnel itself is actually quite narrow. You have to bend over, you can't fully straighten up so you wear a hard helmet as well. And throughout the tunnel, you can see lots of moss. You can see areas where there's like yellow paint on the walls and that's where there was dynamite inserted to actually create the tunnel by the North Koreans. It was really interesting to walk through and once you got to the very end, there's like three walls that were created so that nobody could pass through the tunnel. And in between these walls, you can see like a full new ecosystem that's growing through there, which was really, really interesting. But yeah, on that climb back up, it was a sweaty one. It was probably the warmest I've felt all day. So somewhere I did really want to visit whenever we were doing our DMC tour is an area called the JSA, which is the Joint Security Area. It's like right in the middle between North and South Korea in the DMC area here. And that's where any like big important meetings would take place between the two countries. And I know whenever Trump came over to meet the North Korean president, that's where they met as well. We could see it whenever we were in the observation deck area, but at the moment you actually can't go there at all. Usually there is tours like you can go on that takes you right there 
there you can go inside and you can set foot basically into North Korea within one of the wee buildings you can literally just like step over a wee line you can't really go like into North Korea but you can say like you've stood in North Korea and I really wanted to go and check out that room where all the important meetings take place and stuff but at the moment it's closed as I said and the reason for that is that only a few months ago like four or five months ago I think it was there was an American guy who was here doing a tour of the JSA area and he actually went past the South Korean soldiers and went into North Korea and because of that I think there's been a full stop on the tours going to the JSA area it's the first time in history it's ever happened nobody has ever like went against the rules and kind of tried to step into North Korea I was reading about it online it's a crazy story what the guy was thinking I have no idea because we have been told that like when something like that happens if you go against the rules when you're doing the tour here which there is a lot of and if you go to the JSA area, JSA area there's a lot more rules again if you go against them and you step into North Korea there's nothing the South Koreans can do for you you're basically North Korean property so what was going through his head I have no idea so we can't go to the JSA to step into North Korea however we've just been told about this over here and if you step across that line Technically, you're in North Korea. Supposedly. Woo! <laughs> Traitor! <laughs> Supposedly. We're on divided lines now. But then again, if you look up there, does that mean if you're sitting there, you're in North Korea? I feel like that fence is surely North Korea. <laughs> I feel like this one's maybe just a wee tourist trap. Yeah, wee touristy thing, but <laughs> let's pretend we stepped into North Korea anyway. Hey, <laughs> back in South Korea. <laughs> And our last stop of our tour was the Unification Village, which we didn't technically stop at. We drove through extremely slowly, and there's about 400 people living in this village. And to not disturb these people, they don't let any tourists get out and just walk around freely. But it was really nice to just drive through. And each of the houses has a flag in front of it, and whether the flag is up or the flag is down, you can tell there's someone in the house. The, our tour guide was also telling us that this is a really popular area that people want to live, but they have a max limitation of 400 people living in this village so if someone wants to come and live in the village someone else has to leave and I think there's something to do with taxes or a couple other reasons why people want to come and live in this area which is a bit strange because it's the DMZ after all but we are now at a resting point so here you can just stop off get a coffee get a few souvenirs and go to the toilet before you make your way back to Seoul Thank you so much. Hello. We're back in Seoul City. And it is bloody freezing. It's so cold. <laughs> we did have a wee nap on the bus on the way home there, so that's probably why we're a wee bit cold as well. The day, however, was first class. It was really enjoyable, really educational, really informative. Without being born. <laughs> Without being born. And yeah, like the topic of like North Korea, South Korea, the Korean War. It can is be pretty heavy. Heavy. It is sad whenever we learn so much about it today. It's an, it's an area I didn't really know a lot about, to be honest. With you. We really hope that you enjoyed watching this video and that hopefully maybe you learned something from it as well. We, we have definitely learned, a lot, learned a lot. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> but I think we're going to head back to our hotel now and go for a bit of a power nap Another again nap. <laughs> and get warmed up. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we'd massively appreciate it. It means a lot to us and it's free for you. And hopefully you'll join us again. Bye.